You take a dream, a daydream, of something you want for yourself or something you want for another. And you represent to yourself a scene which, if true, implies the fulfillment of that dream. You like to do this, that, and the other. And so you construct a scene, any kind of a scene, implying the fulfillment of your desire. And then to the degree that you are self-persuaded of the reality of that imaginal act, it will become fact in your world. I could tell you unnumbered stories to support that claim. It's not theory of me anymore. This is fact based upon experience. So when we are told in the book of Luke, the kingdom of God is within you. You can take it literally. These garments that you and I wear are parts of the eternal structure of the universe. You are wearing the garment as an act to wear as a costume. You are not the garment you wear. You are doing this for a purpose, a heavenly purpose, but you are not these garments. You are that being that my friend discovered who sees it from above. And to see this universe from above is so completely unlike what it appears to be seen from this angle. It's not this way at all. But you come down into this world of death for a purpose. Now Blake made this observation and he claims he did not write it from his conscious reasoning mind. That the words were dictated by the spirit of love. Well, God is love. Therefore, if the spirit of love dictated the words of Jerusalem, then it's God dictating it. And in this he said, those in great eternity who contemplate on love, or rather contemplate on death, said this, what seems to be is to those to whom it seems to be, even of torments, despair, and eternal death. But divine mercy steps beyond and redeems man in the body of Jesus. Now that's something that man can't grasp on this level. But I tell you, it is true. To stand in the presence of the risen Christ and commune with him, face to face and voice to voice, then to have love, his infinite love, embrace you. And as he embraces you, you fuse with him without loss of identity, no change in your identity, and yet you are one with the body of Christ. And then he sends you. And he can't send you without himself because you are one with him. There is no divorcement. No separation from that moment on. So when he makes the statement, divine mercy steps beyond and redeems man in the body of Christ. So in my last little pamphlet, I made this statement and I mean it from experience. That you and I are resurrected one by one to unite into a single man who is God. So here is a reflection that he saw in his dream, a man prone, containing infinity, and the deadest thing he'd ever seen. God places a limitation, and then takes upon himself that limitation, and reaches in this act the very limit of contraction, that he may then expand beyond what he was. He takes upon himself the limit of opacity and then begins to expand and there's no limit to translucence, to transparency. This is the world called the world of death. But while we're in it and we ourselves are animating it, we can take any state we desire. There are infinite number of states. You can be in a poor state or a wealthy state. You're no better off as far as the height goes because one is poor and one is wealthy. Not from a spiritual point of view. But while you're in the world of Caesar, why not be comfortable? 
Why not take a state that cushions and comforts? And so you can take a state of affluence if you know what it would be like. Were you affluent? Assume that you are and see the world as you would see it were it true. And then, I, I, I would say accept it. Believe in the reality of that unseen imaginal act. And if you do, it will come to pass. Because the whole vast world really is within you. I don't care what others will tell you, it's all within you. And everyone moving in your world moves because of you. William James made the statement that the greatest revolution in his time was the discovery that man by changing the inner attitudes of his mind could change the outer aspects of his life. Now James belongs to our generation, this century. He's gone from the world, but he was the great educator of the 20th century. And he said the greatest revolution in his time was this discovery. Well, the great book of books, the Bible, makes that statement. Not as James made it, but how would you interpret this? Whatever you desire, believe that you have received it, and you will. Isn't that the one condition imposed upon me, or you, is to persuade self that we have it. How can I persuade myself when at the moment reason denies it and my senses deny it? But James said he could change the inner attitudes of his mind. Can anyone stop you from changing your attitude towards the speaker? You may like him or dislike him. And if your dislike of him causes him to act, to confirm your dislike, and you like the dislike, well then keep it up. If you don't like that reaction, you could change your etiquette towards him, and he automatically and unknowingly would act in the way that you would like. And you can make it with any person in this world. So if I am that free, that I don't have to get your permission to hold an opinion of you, that I can hold it regardless of you, and if I hold it and persuade myself of the reality of that opinion of you, and you conform to it, Am I not free? I am free to entertain any thought, and if I am, and it produces results, but well then I'm a free person, even in the world of Caesar. So here, I do hope that I have persuaded you that the whole vast world, though you seem so small and insignificant to yourself, the whole vast universe is really within you. And so you can take it this day and test it. You're invited to test it. And when you get the results, share it with me. Tell me about it. Write me a letter. And explain what you did and how it worked. And if you are blessed this night with a vision, I would love to hear it. For God makes himself known to man in vision. And he speaks with a man through a dream. Don't try to interpret the dream. Tell me just what happened. My friend did not attempt to interpret it. He told me exactly what happened when my lecture that he was about to record triggered the memory of the dream. But all through his experiences, what lesson he was learning was this. I have forgotten. I must remember. If everyone could now persuade themselves you're trying to remember something, you lost the memory of it when you came this low in the scale. And you're trying to remember. What he was trying to remember was that exalted position where he saw the whole thing as dead. And he came down into the body of death and completely forgot who he really was. And people are shocked when you tell them that they are Christ. All ends run true to origins. If my origin is God, my aim must be God. As the poet said, you see yonder fields, the sesame was sesame, the corn was corn, the silence and the darkness knew 
and so is a man's state born. If I believe what scientists tell me, that my origin is a worm, my end is a worm. If I believe the Bible, and my origin is God, my end is God. And I don't have to choose that anymore. I know that from experience. I don't have to speculate about the risen Christ. I don't have to speculate about God being loved. I stood in the presence of God and his infinite love. I'm not bending my head when I say God is man. As Blake said, thou art a man. God is no more. Thy own humanity learn to adore. God appears and God is light to those poor souls who dwell in night. But does a human form display to those who dwell in realms of day? So here, you're wearing the form of God. You are God. He gave you his name. And the name that he reveals to the whole vast world, if you'll take it, is I am. So that's my name forever. It'll be known, I'll be known by it throughout all generations. But we don't stop there. We say, I am John, a poor John, an unknown John, an unwanted John. And these are the limitations and the restrictions we put upon the name of God. But if I will remember the name, I will glorify the name. And only put upon it that which is noble, that which is free. And if I did it, I would walk in that light. So, do me a favor and try it. Try it, and I promise you from my own experience that you'll get the results. You won't have to hound anyone in this world, but no one. 